Sports. The running game will be a focus today. The Browns have the best rush defense in the league, and they're going against the Colts, who will try to avoid becoming one-dimensional. With that, let's get up to Cleveland. We're standing by our Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. Thank you, Larry. From the shores of Lake Erie, EA Sports has coverage of the NFL from First Energy Stadium here in Cleveland, Ohio. Today, we're set for a good AFC matchup between the Indianapolis Colts and the Cleveland Browns. Hi again, everyone, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, we look at this Browns ball club. They were winners last time out, so they'll be looking, Charles, to make it two in a row. And what I enjoyed when I watched their game tape and their victory last week is they put it together in every phase. Good offense, good defense, and some key plays on special teams. Let's see if they can get that second win in a row. Meanwhile, for the visiting Colts, they too were winners last time out, so something's got to give here. And I love it when both teams come in off of wins. Great mindsets, and it usually leads to a really well-played game. So the Colts now coming out for their opening drive. And they'll be led out by their quarterback, the Stanford man. It's Andrew Luck. I love everything about Andrew Luck's game, but I also love his worldliness. Some of his formative years were spent growing up outside of the United States. And I think that that's helped him when he came back because now he's seen the world. And I think that helped him mature a little bit as well. And the D-line pinching together must be expecting the run. Now a play fake here on first down. Backing up. And he's going to drop this off to his fullback. It's an eight-yard pickup, and it'll be a second down. A good safe pass there right off the bat. That's almost a rhythm play. That's what we like to call it. Get them into rhythm early, something safe, something they're confident about, something they feel good. And once that's completed, then you just keep moving from there because the confidence elevates. Offense in a good spot here, second and two. Now a run. This is Bilal Powell. And he'll be taken down right around the 34 after a pickup of only a yard. Hold him. Offense. Just play number three here on the opening drive, and it's an early third and one. And they're going to go soft on the corners. Luck looks to throw on third and one. And he's got a man open. That's Allen. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Almost not fair. The big guy running the corner route, being able to lean and push and get to where he wants. So how do you stop him? A lot of times you want to have a linebacker on him, a bigger body guy who can handle him physically. But a lot of times that doesn't work as well because his quickness often wins the route. This is the running back power. And he's going to be hemmed in and brought down right at the line of scrimmage. Just a yard on the pick up there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Here's the offense, and if you're the defense, Charles, you really have to focus on that guy that's highlighted on the screen. You're talking about pure speed. T.Y. Hilton can get down the middle of the field and really stretch a defense. So second and nine, the defense looking to put them in a bad spot here. Defense really showing respect to the deep ball here, playing off the receivers. To throw on second down is Locke. It's complete here to T.Y. Hilton. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. 
And now a first down following that long gain. They run with Powell. Man, he'll be taken down near the 20 at the 21. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. And now the starting defense for the Browns. You have to love Jamie Collins. You can use him just about anywhere on the defense. Inside linebacker, outside linebacker, defensive end. He might even play a little bit of safety if you give him the chance. And here comes play number six on this drive. And no press coverage here. They are backing off in the secondary. He's got time. And seeing nowhere to throw, he chucks this one away from harm. Incomplete. Now it's third down. Whether they deserve credit or not, the defense is going to take credit for that incompletion because it always feels good when you slow down an offense. Here comes the seventh play of this opening drive. They've moved it well, but here's third down. Throwing on third down, Luck, finding time. And a big loss here as he's taken down. The defense rising to the challenge and setting him back on the sand. Well, many times when you talk about mobile quarterbacks, you get the sense that they feel like they can get out of any bad situation. They keep moving around and trying to emulate guys like the scrambler or the dodger. Instead, they keep losing yardage and losing yardage and digging themselves a hole that they can't get out of. Here's Nick Folk now on for the field goal. It'll be spotted on the right hash. A 52-yard attempt. That's running out of steam, and it won't get there. He left it just short. No good. And this will remain a scoreless game. Well, that opening drive looked good for a moment there, but they'll wind up being turned away thanks to the missed field goal. And those especially hurt when you come into a game on the road. You're trying to get things to go your way early, and now you suffer a setback right out of the gate. They'll come out in the pistol. They'll run for the first time with Johnson. And give him about five as he gets this up to the 48-yard line. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. Four yards remaining now on second down. A second down throw for Bridgewater. Pryor has it complete. And he's going to be out of bounds, but able to take it inside the 40-yard line. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. I like watching the wide receiver screen because it's a real teamwork play. Because guess what? The guy catching the ball, he'll get all the credit. But how about the people up to block in front of him, either fellow receivers or offensive linemen? That makes that play a really nice timing play, and sometimes it can break big. complete he's got it five yards on the catch there brings up second down good throw good catch but i really like the route the drag and being able to run away from defenders hard to stick with them for that long yeah better against man than zone or better against man because now you're running away from someone and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone throwing bridgewater and no escaping this time as he'll go down they got him for a sack Boy, he came in off the edge so quickly there. Look out, because that's exactly what it was being shouted by the offensive lineman to his quarterback because he had no chance to block him. So here we go now. An extra defensive back in there on third and ten. On third 
Third down, Bridgewater. He's got his man on the crossing route. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. They didn't get the first down, but I have to say I do like the call. I like what they were trying to do. Try and hit your receiver on the run and see if he can pick it up, keep it on his feet, get a little rack yardage. Yeah, but a nice job defensively to get to him and keep him short of the first. Bridgewater on fourth down. And this is brought in by Pryor. And he will have a first down at about the 21-yard line. So some early intrigue here as we've reached the end of the first quarter. Nothing, nothing, our score. EA Sports NFL Sunday returns following this. This presentation of the NFL on EA Sports is brought to you by Snickers. You're off your game when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Back with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gauden. The Browns with a football to begin quarter number two. And they're on the move here. They've got it first and ten. Six there on first. In recent years, the slot receivers really gained stature in the NFL because they could do so many things. Yes, they can line up wide like your normal wide receiver, but to have that kind of courage and toughness to run routes in the middle of the field and become dependable targets for their quarterbacks and move the sticks, those guys are worth their weight in gold. Red zone opportunity. Bridgewater. And he is caught at the seven yard line. And all the way down inside the five to the four. It's a nice pickup of 12 yards and it gives him a first and goal. And now the passing game here in the second quarter starting to heat up a little bit. Don't you feel the rhythm starting to happen, right? You see it now. The confidence is starting to rise. I think now as a play caller, because that has happened, you lean on it a little bit more. You don't go totally away from running the football. But you do say, guess what? We can throw it, we can throw it well with a whole lot of confidence. Collision there, jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. After all the preparation, all the practice, a play like that will absolutely break your heart. They had everything they wanted, just unable to complete it. In the end zone, a big time drop. Jarred loose. It's incomplete. The tight end Gary Barnage, the intended receiver, and it's third down. Down here in the red zone, you know your tight end's going to be a favorite target. Couldn't hang on. And sometimes they just have to get out of their own head because they understand how tight windows are there and how many bodies are there. And sometimes they just overthink it and don't catch the ball. <laughs> Long drive. The defense just cannot seem to catch a break and get off the field. for Bridgewater. That's caught at the two. Two yards is all they'll get on the completion. It's fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. Can this defense hold him out? Here we go now. Fourth and goal from the two. Fourth 
down. They're going. Bridgewater. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. Terrell Pryor, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Browns are able to cash in for six. Big fourth down conversion for the score and the defense. That is a tough pill to swallow. Big time for them. How about them just deciding to go for it on fourth down? And, oh, okay, forget the field goal, because that looked like an easy three points. Yeah, you might have had a defensive breakdown in there, but they pressed the issue and found a way to get it into the end zone. Give them big credit for that. So that drive, 12 plays in length, and it's capped off by the Browns' touchdown. the score it's Parkey on to kick it away this will be fielded at the six and a good effort on the return there gets him across the 30 to the 33 yard line and now the Browns defensive unit trots back out and yeah, they got to be feeling good about forcing that long missed field goal the last go around and you know what upsets a kicker more than anything is missing a kick they think they can make and feeling like the other side believes that they had something to do with it. And it doesn't matter to those guys on defense. I know they're taking full credit. Yep, we forced him into the miss, and they're going to ride that confidence the rest of the way. We'll see if the kicker is able to get his confidence back as well. On first and 10, Locke. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out, incomplete. On any passes in the middle of the field, anyone who's going after the football is going to be conscious that it's probably going to be contested and often physically. Sometimes that leads to drops. Back to the air, Luck on second down. Deep drop. Under pressure and down he goes. Luck is sacked. Demario Davis. He's the one that got to him. He takes him down for a loss of nine. Okay, you know my bias is about to come out here. A lot of people think that the offense is just moving in the wrong direction. I'd say they're moving in the right direction because the defense is pushing them back. Former defensive guy. Now, as a quarterback third and long, you really got to rally the troops here, don't you? Yeah, you do in a big way. And what else do you have to look out for? More pressure coming at you because it seems to be working pretty well. It's locked. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. It'll be a gain of four, and that'll bring up fourth down. I know they don't like to hear it when they get to a certain age, but then you have to start to use your, your skills, your wiles, right, your mind to beat guys to the football. And getting your toes tapped in bounds definitely qualifies as that, doesn't yeah, it? The veteran showing he still has the agility. On fourth down, here's Pat McAfee to kick it away. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. And that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. We get a glance at the Colts' defense as they work their way back on the field. And they gave up a touchdown last drive. You kind of need to hit the reset button after every touchdown given up, Charles. I love that, and, and the way that you phrased it is perfect because from series to series, you can reset how the game is going to go. If you gave up a touchdown before, it doesn't mean you have to do it again. And if you made a great play before, you have to reset again anyway because they're going to attack. So I love the way you phrased it and put it out there. That's what they have to do in this series. Not like when you're playing a video game. You can't hit the reset button here. Let's go. No, you shouldn't anyway. That's for sure. Here's Bridgewater. That's complete. It's Gordon. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. 12 yards on the pickup. And that'll be good for a Cleveland first. That was a nicely run slant route. And what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield. 
for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. A first down throw for Bridgewater. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. After watching him drop that slant, I can hear my old coach's voice ringing in my ears right now. You can't run with the ball until you catch it, trying to get those rack yards before he secured it. Throwing again, Bridgewater on second and ten. Pryor has it complete. And the play goes for 19 yards, gives him a new set of downs. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. to play here in the first half. More from Cleveland after this. A reminder that coming up in two minutes, we'll check in with Larry Ridley in Orlando with highlights and analysis of this first half of play. And I'm gonna check in with a heater. I'm gonna be right there with you, partner. Again, we'll see the pistol here. Bridgewater now looking to throw on first. Got a man, and he hits him in stride. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and it'll be second and very short. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays. Makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? And what a really nice game right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. Second and inches is oftentimes an invitation for an offense coordinator to take a big shot downfield because he feels like he can come back on third down and pick up the first down. But sometimes you just don't want to break tendency. Stay with what you are, stay with who you know, and go get the first down. That's exactly what they did. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. On first and ten, Bridgewater. And Barnage has it on the right side. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. Second down throw for Bridgewater. Gets it to Gordon. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. First down, Bridgewater. And a quick throw here, that's complete. A good pick up there of 20 yards. 
We heard them talk before the game about utilizing the intermediate passing game this week. It works for them there. They move the chains. And we saw them work on it in practice as well. And most teams take a period at a time to work on different things. They put a couple periods of work into the intermediate passing game. And now we know exactly why. They got the look that they were seeking, and they were able to take advantage of it. Let's go. Bridgewater again. And this one brought in by Barnage. Call it a three-yard gain, and that'll bring up a second and goal. How about the timing on that one? Boy, they were in sync, weren't they? Three-step drop, balls out of his hands, right to the tight end. Nice completion, just like they do it in practice. They'll run it with Johnson, and he takes this one in for a Brown score. Johnson in the final seconds of the first half, and the Browns add on to their lead. That's one of the better examples of clock management I've seen. Whittled it all the way down just about, and still put the ball in the end zone. Yeah, just a methodical drive and something really to take into the lockers here. Now Parkey for the extra point. And it's good to make it 14 nothing. Now after the score, it's Parkey on to kick it away. Here comes Philip Dorsett now to return it. And a good return. He's across the 35-yard line, right around the 36. So we have come to halftime in what's already a two-touchdown game. As we send you down to our EA Sports Studios in Orlando, where we find our man Larry Ridley with our halftime report. Thanks, Brandon. I'm Larry Ridley, and welcome to our EA Halftime Report. The Browns are happy to be in front right now and just want to play two more solid quarters. The Colts won't panic either. They know they just need to take it one play at a time. All right, let's get straight to it. Here's some highlights from the first half. Third down at the 21. They're going to come away with another sack here. This goes for a loss of 14. Browns have it at the two. Here we get a quick pass and completion, and this play will go for six. They strike first in the half. Colts have it midway through the second. They're going to get to the QB once again. This goes for a loss of nine. Final seconds in the first half. Johnson's going to stay inside after the handoff, and he'll go in for the score. That puts them on top by 14. Okay, Larry, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This is fielded at the chalk of the 10. And he is out of bounds as they'll start up past the 30. Here's the Browns offense now getting set to start off this third quarter. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. the 
offense lining up first and ten. Bridgewater on first down. It's caught. It's Barnage over the middle. And he takes this one down all the way near the 30. And I know it's hard in live action, but you've got to keep your hands away from the face. That's a 15-yard penalty. You work on it all the time, making sure your target area is lower and trying to keep your hands away from the face mask so you don't get the big penalty. So the offense has it first and 10. Penalty. It's Johnson. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. Throwing. Bridgewater. That's complete right away. the completion we're going to get a timeout an injured player we'll check on his status when we get back Touchdown of the game, his third on the year. And the Browns add six to their lead. Not a bad start for him. Two drives for the offense, two rushing TDs. Almost like he's in the percussion section in the band, isn't it? Got a little oom fright, got a little crash, got a little bang. He's got it all as he gets to the end zone. Second rushing touchdown, as you noted, on two drives. He's off to a terrific start. Okay, you ready? Wait for it. But um, psh. Now Parkey for the extra point. And it is now 21 to nothing. Now after the score, it's Parkey on to kick it away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end. And now the Browns get ready as they head back out there. They were able to force the three and out last time, led to the punt, and then led to a touchdown for their crew. So they'll be looking for a little bit more of that, Charles. Well, I think that they created the spark with the three and out. Gave a little momentum to their offense. They said, all right, appreciate it, guys. And they took the ball downfield and stuck it in the end zone. And that defense wasn't out there long. They'll be trying to keep it short here. forward to about the 27 yard line two yards on the pickup there it'll be second and eight that's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball held them to a gain of two and that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays second and eight now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game one receiver left is hilton Here's Luck now on second down. And complete to Moncrief over the middle. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. Still in search of the first down after that last completion. It looks like a nickel set now for the Browns on third down. Now Luck. And that is incomplete. Holding offense. Yeah. 
Here's Pat McAfee now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. This is taken at the 18. We'll call that a 49-yard punt, but a net of just 39 following the 10-yard return. And the Browns will take over first and 10. Heading out as the Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. And that recipe on their last drive that resulted in a touchdown looked pretty good, so they'll be hoping to do that once more. And it takes me back to when we sat with the offensive coordinator and the head coach. They felt pretty good about their game plan and thought there were some holes in the defense, and they exploited them the last time out. Let's see if they can come back and put together a similar drive. And we'll see if they can do just that. Bridgewater now looking to throw on first. Complete to Barnage. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 11 yards on the pickup, and it's good enough for a Cleveland first down. And there's another completion to the tight end. And let's face it, it is hard to overthrow a six foot six inch target. It is indeed. Quarterbacks like their speed guys. They like that huge six six target that they've got in him. They really do. And it, it reminds me of what one great tight end told me once. He told his quarterback, just make sure you throw it up there. You know, kind of like put up in the top shelf where the kids can't get it. Play clock winding down. Play clock down to zero, and that's going to be a delay. Delay of game, offense. Still first down. They come out here in the Let's eye. Johnson. And he'll get this up to about the 40. He wipes out the penalty yardage with a good run to get it back to second and seven. You know how we get focused at end of the half and end of the game situations about how much time's on the board and you know what you need to do? Sometimes you don't even have to worry about that. That's just smart football. You know, that kind of a lead, staying in bounds, it burns clock, even in a situation that we're not really focused on it. So the play clock's running down. Bridgewater now on second down. And this one brought in by Barnage. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. Call it a pickup of seven, and they'll be faced with a third and inches. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. Time running out here on the play clock. Third and short yardage, Bridgewater. And he finds Barnage, he's got it. Nine yards on the play and a first down. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed picking up the first. Three quarters in the books. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. And we're back now here in Cleveland. A lot of happy faces in the crowd at this point as their guys have a big lead here to start quarter number four. it to Gordon and he is out of bounds inside the 30 and 15 yards there on the catch and run he's played a great game it continues right there even with this lead confident to throw the pass and have the reception made there's no doubt who the leader of their team is is there there's no doubt who they want to ride all the way to the finish because strategy would tell you run the football run the clock down instead they're letting him throw it because they feel that confident in what he's getting done 
The first down carry here for Johnson. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. A nice pick up there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. Well, I'd say that run's pretty emblematic of what we've seen all day long. No matter what they've done on offense, this offensive line has controlled the line of scrimmage, giving them time to throw it, run it, do whatever they wanted. That's why their point's up on the board. And right now, the psyche of the offense, we're in control, and we can do whatever we feel like doing out here on the field. In the red zone this time. They'll need to get the playoff quickly. From the red zone now, Bridgewater. Oh, there's that man again. It's complete. A gain of six there on first. Partner, it's a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fella runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. Now he can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. Play clock winding down. On second down, Johnson. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. It's an eight-yard pickup, and it leads to a first and goal. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. And the play clock's running down. Bridgewater. And he's got his favorite target yet again. It's complete. Call it a one-yard gain on the play, and it'll be second and goal. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. Second and goal as the offense looks. And he's in. Touchdown, Browns. Duke Johnson. His third touchdown of the game and fourth on the year. And the Browns add on to their lead. And he keeps carrying the ball into the end zone. And in this one, he's sort of carrying the team on his back. He's the reason that they lead right now. No question about it. And you talk about on his back. He's not minding the extra weight at all, is he? Carrying that just as lightly as he does the football. Yeah, the, what a great performance so far. Those three touchdowns, it's got him in the lead. Now Parkey for the extra point. It's good, and they stretch their lead to 28-0 now. Now after the score, it's Parkey on to kick it away. This one taken from the seven. And he'll take this across the 25. Couple extra yards up to the 27 yard line. Holding, receiving team. So there you go, holding by the offense, and that'll push him back. Changes everything now as you try and figure out what your playbook has for you. Longer yardage situations, tougher to execute and pick up first downs. Luck on first down. Surveying the field. Look at the time. And that is incomplete. His tight end, Dwayne Allen, the intended receiver. And now it's second down. They got pressure there and only rushing three. And there's a defensive coordinator right now who is celebrating not just getting home with three there, but realizing if that's the type of pressure he can get in the entire game, then his pass defense is going to be excellent. You're dropping eight. Where are you going to go with the football? To throw is long. Backing up. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Stevie Johnson, the intended receiver, and it's third down. Whenever they're trying to attack a zone defense, you're trying to figure out where your gaps are going to be. And depending on what type of zone they're playing, it could be on the outside, it could be in the middle, it could be in the seams, in the edges. In this case, they tried to attack the middle of the field, but this zone defense didn't allow it because they were able to see the ball come off the quarterback's hands and everyone was able to react to the football and knock it away. 
So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. Now stopped him in his tracks. Here's Pat McAfee now as he's on to punt for Indianapolis. Time for a break. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line. And it continues into the end zone for a touchback. So the Browns in possession of the football here as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Let's go, Jets! Bridgewater here to throw. Out to his left. He finds some open field here. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. So he got his hands a little too far outside. The ref caught him through the flag. For Johnson. And some room to work. And he'll cut it out to the sideline. There goes Duke Johnson. And they are going to score again. Yet another touchdown as they just add to their totals. And that rushing touchdown is fourth, puts him just one shy of the NFL record in a single game. And we all know he would love to get to that record and even beyond it. But he doesn't need to in order to impress in this one, does he? What a, what a performance. What an absolute great game that he's had here in this one. Still an important piece of business to take care of, the extra point. And he's been a busy man. Five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. Those are the ones the offensive coordinators dream about. One play drives from that distance. What an effort. It results in the touchdown. Now after the score, it's Parkey on to kick it away. This is fielded at the chalk of the 10. And not a bad return. Here he gets it out to the 25-yard line. The Browns' defense getting ready. They are looking to preserve this shutout. So for them, a lot on the line. A lot on the line, a lot of pride that goes into that. Because let's face it, when you've had that kind of a day, you do not want any type of a fluke play to end it. You're going to win the game. That's not the issue. But to have a clean ledger going into the locker room and sitting in film next week, oh, that's that satisfying. Feel good. Oh, that's the way to do it. They're looking to cradle that goose egg. On first down, it's long. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. All right, say it with me now. There are a lot of different words we come up with. Maybe we go back and forth after that play, getting his toes tapped down to make that catch. Crafty? Yep. Wiley? Oh, definitely. All the veteran names? You name it. Has every move in the book and continued to get better throughout his career so he can make that type of a catch. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. So they complete the pass and now they face a second down. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here, press coverage, look defensively. On second down, here's Locke. 
He gets it left side to Johnson. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. Call it a gain of five. And that's going to make it third down and less than a yard. And now it looks like they're going to be in the hurry up. Here's Locke. And this is going to be incomplete. Allen, the intended receiver. And it's fourth down. And now Nick Full, his career long, 56 yards. This will be from 56 yards out. I have to say that was a surprise call on third and inches. I thought they'd try and run the football there, but you got to believe they thought they'd surprise the defense and pick up something downfield, but that one goes incomplete. Well, it's a Pyrrhic victory at best, but Charles, no team wants to get shut out, so it's hard to blame them for taking the three there. You can't blame them one bit. It hasn't been the best performance, that's for darn sure. But there is something to be said for fighting to avoid the goose egg and they're at least trying to finish out strong. And this will be a touchback as Ed sails over the end line. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. They have the dream scenario you hope for coming into the game. Just one kneel here, and this game should be over. It's always the final play of preparation each week. The practicing of the kneel down formation, the victory formation. We've got a game in hand, and that's all they're going to want to do now. They'll put someone back deep just in case something goes haywire. But all in all, take the snap, kneel down, and, and shake hands. Yes, get out of there. Start the drive on the ground with Johnson. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Partner, you know I love to point out when teams break tendency and do something a little bit different from the norm. But when you run the ball in the first play of the drive, that's not a tendency breaker at all. That's just trying to establish yourself as you move forward. And Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams, no matter where they're predicted to finish, talk about protecting your home turf. They were able to do that here in this one. Similar to a tennis match, right? Not letting them break your serve. That way you hold on to it. They got it done, and they feel very good about that victory. So for the Browns, it's a win that might keep them alive in the playoff races. They're back to 500 at 5-5. Five and five. And they will hit the road next week for a date with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Meanwhile, for Indianapolis, it was a game they really needed as they dropped back to 4-6. and six. And they'll be at home for one next week as the Baltimore Ravens come to town. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. Yeah!